Hello everybody, Camelia here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new video. Today I would like to share with you the two garments that I made from the latest uh, Knit Holder magazine from uh, issue 5 2024. And if you want to see all the patterns that are in the magazine, of course, you'll find the link in the, um, in the video description. But I also have a video that I just posted last week, I think, or this week, where you can see also uh, the rest of the patterns, of course, with some uh, comments included for myself. So, um, in this issue, uh, there are a lot of uh, really nice patterns, but uh, my uh, eye uh, fell for this. It's uh, a pair of pants and a jacket, and I made both of them. But in this video, I'm going to talk only about the jacket, and you'll find the video for the pants in the video description. Because I want to talk a little bit also about uh, how I am um, picking a size and about the changes that I made. And I have quite a few things to say about the jacket and also about the pants. So you will find the link for the pants in the video description. So I'm going to talk uh, uh, in this video about the jacket. Please don't forget to give me thumbs up. It's very, very important for the video to get thumbs up. And you know, if you are here, it's costing you nothing. Just a click of the button or a tap on your phone to give me a thumb up to the video. And you know, I always love to hear your opinions about the things I'm making. So very much appreciated also to leave a comment. So let's talk about this jacket. So this jacket is pattern number seven. I hope you can see it. It's this one here. And as you can see it in the it's such a pity that they used the black for this one i mean it's nice it's classic i don't know what it's easy to wear but it's so difficult to see something i mean the, you can see you cannot see anything on it the details you know in the in the garment the only thing that i could see in this uh, in this garment was the fact that the um, jacket is really cropped and um i think the jacket, the I would say that the pants have a really high waist, maybe because they used, or it was supposed to be like um, something that they are going together. So the jacket is really cropped. But anyway, we are talking about the jacket now. So really cool jacket with a lot of details, as you can see here. It has some. It's almost like um, how should I say? like a denim jacket it has um, all those panels in the front and the pockets and the two-piece sleeve with cuffs only in this case because it's so cropped it's only is cut at the length what you see in the pattern and they only uh, did a row of um, uh, stitching of i think a centimeter away from the edge you know i think to stop uh, the fabric from fraying or something like that but of course it would be really easy just to make a bend around that edge even if you want it so cropped it's really easy to make uh, to cut a bend i don't know three centimeters or the same width as the um, cuff to go a little bit nice together and to put it there but in this case they only did a um, row of stitching so before I get uh, to show you the, the things on the pattern, I want to say, to say a word about sizing because I know that, you know, when I'm starting a pattern, I'm always uh, thinking, well, with the exception, let's say, uh, um, the patterns from uh, Designer Stitch where I really know my size. My size is size 3, cup B. I know that's my size with some really small fitting adjustments. But... Uh, with knit mode, in the meantime, I do know my sizes a little bit, but I was always thinking that I need to make, because my, my bust is 96 and their size 40 is, size, is uh, 95 centimeters uh, for the bust, and for the size 38 is 91. The thing is to remember that the that knit mode is drafting for 1 meter 72 height, I'm 169, and they are dra drafting for a, si for a cup uh, C and I'm a cup B, a small C, so I'll say a cup B. But with that being said, I always make uh, the rest of the, uh, or the length of the size. I was making always a size 38 with the width, especially here the bust, with the, for a size uh, 40. But in this case, I measured the pattern a little bit and I was thinking, you know what, I'm just going to try to make a size 38. So that's what I did. I make a size 38. For everything also and the neckline the leg line the neckline of the size 38 is fitting me really really nice so also this time i did also a size 38 for the bust and i was thinking well i'm going to see how that is fitting 
So I took a size um, 38. Then I did also something else that I never do. <laughs> I asked my husband to measure me. Usually, you know, you measure from your uh, the point of your shoulder uh, to your wrist with the, hand, with the hand kept like this to get the right length of your arm. But this time, because this is a drop shoulder, it's really difficult to see, you know, I can measure from here, but actually the best way to measure is from the base of the neck over the shoulder and then down here to the wrist, you know, like you say like, you stay like this and then you have someone measuring you because that's the safest way and the best way to measure you from the base of the neck over the shoulder, you know, you stay straight over the arm and then to, till here. And I asked him to, to measure me like that and that measurement I compared with the jacket because I knew that the color is going to start somewhere here at the base of the neck. And I measured that and I had to take seven centimeters to get, because I wanted to have it exactly till here. I didn't want it to have it too long. So in total, I had to take seven centimeters because I measured on the pattern, of course, from the base of the neck over the, 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 the shoulder and then all the way, including also the cuff. So with that, so this is how I uh, decided the size, uh, the length of the, of the sleeve. Um, and that worked really, really great. You can see I'm going to post pictures here. Of course, most of them, they are together with the pants. <laughs> but uh, that's a great way to, to get a really accurate uh, length of the, of the sleeve. Um, something else. What did I do? Oh, in my case, because I didn't want, I totally didn't want to, to have that crop length. You see in the pattern, they use this pattern actually to make... Um, also the cover uh, jacket, which is a little bit longer. And also, let's see, the... Uh, which model? Uh, let's see, I'm going to take a look here. So they made jacket 5 and jacket 6 with the same pattern. And all those ones, they have uh, different um, lengths. Uh, in the... I'm watching here on my pattern the for the, si for the cover jacket. This is just a little bit longer they have it's only maybe two centimeters longer on the pattern but it does get a much wider um, bend here so for my case you know i really didn't want to take the time to make a, a toile or a test garment very bad idea but if you are not really sure i always say make a test garment it's a great way to see how a pattern uh, is going together and to get an idea of the style and of the fit, length and all that and you can adjust. But you know, because I'm sewing so much, I do have already a bit an idea how I want to have the things. So that's why I went directly to the paper. So I added uh, to the paper, I added 12 centimeters to the original length. So you will see this is the pattern piece. And let's see. This line here was the for my model number seven, so I added 12 centimeters, including a three centimeter um, hem allowance. So that's what I did directly on the paper. And I'm going to switch the cab in a moment to show you a little bit of pieces on the paper. So this, these were the most uh, important things first. I'm using here the PDF version of the, of the pattern. And of course, uh, I will say again, I'm um, working with Knip Model. They are, I have a subscription from them, but uh, I get to choose every month something if I want to sew in advance from the magazine. And I get the PDF. I ask always the PDF pattern because it's easier for me. Otherwise, I need to pick, uh, pick it up somewhere else, uh, printed in a copy shop uh, version. But I don't know if uh, the PDFs in their store are like that, but on the files that I get, they are, all the lines are, are the same. There are no, um, how should I say, uh, differences in lines and stuff like that. So it's kind of difficult to see uh, what I'm doing. That's why in this case, I just uh, traced with a marker the size that I want, you know, in advance. Because then I did trace this on some uh, paper, you know, to make my adjustments and stuff like that. So I want to show you the pattern pieces because uh, there are some, uh, you know, if you intend to make this jacket, there are some things that you need to keep in mind. 
and let's take a look. I'm going to start with the back and finish with the front because in the front is the most uh, uh, work with, with this pattern. Uh, if I'm talking about tracing, you know, if you have the magazine and you are going to trace this pattern, um, it's going to be, uh, you have to pay really uh, well attention, good attention because it's used for a few patterns. Of course, you have to, to do some work. So this is the back. And as you can see here, I just um, made a line with a marker to, to know exactly which size I want to make. So, or which are the lines for the size that I want to make. This was really easy. There is nothing to do here. Um, I traced it like this and I'm going to show you my piece also. Here is the piece that I traced, as you can see. So what I did to the back, as you can see here, I made my usual sway back adjustment and how I'm doing that, I'm just making, this is the waist here, a little bit higher than the waist. I'm drawing a line from, um, uh, from seam allowance to seam allowance and then I take usually one and a half centimeter um, sway back adjustment and I'm measuring here one and a half centimeter and making you know it's like a dart making to the seam allowance here I have a little hinge to the seam allowance not through it and then I'm closing it up and this is the piece I added here you know um, I added, of course, the seam allowance uh, because this piece in the magazine, of course, also and in the finished garment, you do have, uh, let's see, you do have um, a center back seam. So I added here, if you were to, to put this on the fold, of course, you gain a little bit of uh, fabric here because of this uh, uh, change for the sway back. So I added seam allowance one and a half centimeters. I added here one and a half centimeters and here as you can see because I made I copied this in uh, on my paper and then I put it together with pins uh, and I was thinking well it looks like the armhole is really low so or too low for my taste so I just added one centimeter here at the armhole and blend it back into the original armhole as you can see here now you see that here is looking a little bit uh, small as you can see here is lesser than one centimeter and that is because I'm just going to try to find the back yoke which I had here and that is because here is the piece another change that I'm always making in uh, Knip Mode magazine patterns is taking um, you know making like a narrow shoulder adjustment I'm just taking a little bit from the shoulder and in this case is one centimeter and because this is in two pieces of course I put them together like this and blended that really nicely to get uh, back into the armhole that is going of course all the way through the back panel so this was the back this is uh, also the yoke also here is nothing actually the yoke and I'm saying now but as you can see we do have a line here on the back this is the one piece back in one piece that you can use for the other jackets but for the for this jacket that I made I have it here like this and you have here a line where you need to cut so you have the back in two pieces and in this case you have the lower back in cut with the center back seam and then on another piece of paper paper I traced the upper part of the back with a neckline of course as you can see here and of course here I also need to add seam allowance for the neckline I added only six millimeter seam allowance and this piece is cut on the fold but because I really wanted to get the most of my fabric I just uh, make it uh, made it double and this is also something that you have in the instructions to make it uh, you know the to make the whole paper uh, pattern and then you can play a little bit better with cutting um so this was the back and the changes that i did the narrow shoulder adjustment and the sway back and raising the armhole in the back and of course i did the same change also in the front you see in a minute here i have also the up the collar piece which it gets like a small stand i'm not sure what's the name 
of that lower piece of the color. You will see it in a minute. Also here I traced first because otherwise it's really impossible to see. So this was the back. Um, let's see, I'm going to try to be a little bit organized. Well, this is the sleeve and also here, as I said, there is quite a bit of uh, tracing work. Even if you are printing this at the copy shop or, you, or even if you get a copy version from the uh, printed a uh, copy shop <laughs> pattern from the from the from cream model even then you have to do some some uh, tracing you know because you have all these pieces that they are split so here i have the sleeve which is also in uh, needs to have some work done and you have here you have a line where you need to cut and this will be this sleeve and as you can see I took the length in uh, two, p in two, two different places I didn't know of course you, you must not do that you must not take everything from the bottom because otherwise the bottom of your sleeve is going to become really really wide and of course you also don't want to take everything from the upper part imagine seven centimeters because otherwise your sleeve is going to become really narrow here on the upper part so i split a little bit what i wanted uh, to have for the sleeve um so for the sleeve i did not i made no changes because the armhole is pretty much the same i did measure a little bit to be sure that i don't have too much ease in the sleeve but it was not so you know it was quite okay it was just a little bit it was really easy to put the sleeve in and what is important when you have this kind of uh, splitting of the pattern and you get a lot of uh, paper pieces that are later needs to or pattern pieces that later needs to come together my advice is put some notches i mean uh, i have here for example you can see in the sleeve i have here one do they have here one they don't but I did put one, you know, to make it a little bit easier to uh, to marry it together when I put my uh, fabric pieces. So like so. As you can see here. So this was the sleeve. Again, not really difficult. There is a split here. And of course, a little cuff that is coming. Now I have here the... This is the most work. And as you can see... Again, even if you have this one um, ordered as a printed pattern, you will have to make all this, uh, you have to trace again and make all these pieces because the jacket, and I'm going to grab it here. Oh, let's see. I'll uh, talk a little bit about the fabric in a minute. As you can see here, the jacket, there is a lot happening. So you have, you have a small panel here in the front you have this center panel where you have also the pocket. The pocket is functional actually. Let's try to make it open. Here is the pocket. So you have the side, the front panel, the center panel, and this is the side panel here. And then you have another piece that is also cut from the original front, and that will be this yoke here. So as you can see, the one piece pattern that you get, it needs to be cut in one, two, three, four um, pattern pieces. And you have it here. And you know, I said by uh, on the sleeve that the best is to put some um, notches on your pattern pieces to know where they are coming together. Well, I did not do that in the front. And to be honest, it was quite, uh, I had to pay really good attention when I was putting this, uh, this, pieces here especially this one you know when it's cut in fabric is almost impossible to to know uh, which is which because it's, it's looking very much similar well you need to remember that the original pattern and let's see if i was uh, let's see i have also a yoke here so the yoke will come here like so right or a bit to the front actually let's see so this is my yoke and then you have the front with the extension for the buttons you have the instructions and then you have this piece here and then you have the side piece and as you can see the side panel has also a little bit of the um, of the armhole and that's why here i have this blue paper because this is also a piece that i had to um, adjust to be the same with the back because of course if you 
I raise it in the back, I want to raise it also in the front because the side seams needs to be the same length. So as you can see, this is these are all the pieces that you get from the one pattern that you get from uh, Knit Mode. The lines, you know, they are not really difficult to see because you have here, they say for which size group you need to where you need to cut. But you need to remember that actually, let's see, my pattern was supposed to stop somewhere here. So then you have the choice how you continue with this. You go smaller or you go uh, a little bit wider or whatever. I chose to go from the from the original line to go the same width of this down. But that's also something that you can decide or you could go even skinnier. But I was thinking that it's, this is skinny enough. It's, it's looking good. So as you can see here, and what I was saying that I think, I'm not thinking, I think is, is, is really the best advice to put some notches here. So for the next time I'll marry these ones again at the, at the, let's see, at the stitching line, very important. And then make a notch, trace it with the tracing wheel on both sizes. And here maybe make, uh, if I make here, Two notches I'll make here only one here and one here something you know that it does a little bit uh, is different than the other side um, as you can see here I had all the seam allowances afterwards added and why is that because I traced first the pattern in one piece so the whole front I traced it in one piece in the size that I wanted fit it and then I just uh, slashed everything and just added some uh, paper in order to add my seam allowances. T talking about seam allowances, I um, tend to work with, uh, like I learned from designer stitch, I use different seam allowances for different places. Let's say for the neckline and the collar, I'm using six millimeter seam allowance. For the shoulders, I'm using one and a half um, centimeter seam allowance. The same for the side seams, the armholes and the sleeves, they are one centimeter. It's just my, um, it's just the way I like to, to have them because like that I, I also need to trim much lesser. I don't need to, to trim, you know, to spend a lot of time trimming seam allowances that they are too big. So I'm just using them, you know, for the neckline if you use 6 millimeters, that neckline is going to lay really nicely flat. The same with the collar, if you, around the collar I'm using only 6 millimeter seam allowance, as you can see here. And that's just because this you don't need to trim it, you don't need to snip it or whatever. This is going to work really, really nicely. And this is the other small piece that's coming here, like so. But this little piece I had it on the on the pants pattern, so that's why you cannot see it here. So this was also fun to sew. So let's talk a little bit about oh, and I have of course here I have a piece. These are the this is the um, uh, pocket placket that you need to draw yourself with the information that you get from Clip Molder. And this is the uh, pocket that you see it here on the inside, the pocket piece, this one. And this is the cuff, it's also it's just a rectangular. And of course, keep in mind, you need to add seam allowances to all the pieces. So these were the pattern pieces. As I said, there are quite a few. And also on this one, of course, on the front yoke, I added, I took away one centimeter for the, or about one centimeter for the narrow shoulder adjustment. I was, in the past, I was making that slash, you know, to bring the shoulder seam to make it shorter. These days, I know that for my body, at least, it doesn't really matter if I just chop away a little bit from here. I really had no problems with putting the sleeve in. So, you know, it's really much, much faster. And it's kind of the same result, so, you know, I'm always for, um, why spend a lot of time on something that you can really make it with uh, exactly the same, you know, the same results, but then with much lesser time. <laughs> okay, the fabric. And I'm going to show it to you on the cam here. Well, this is from somewhere else. The fabric is uh, linen viscosa from, uh, of viscose linen, as they call it, from uh, Driesen. And I think it's about 170 uh, grams. I'm not sure. 
but it's it's really light and it, it does crease of course but not as much as 100% linen it's very flowy and very very nice to wear so I was thinking in my head I I want and I hope I have the time to make also uh, one version of this complete set in um, in a solid color and I'm thinking a magenta or something like that it's just so nice because this is such a nice fabric to wear you know if it, it doesn't have to be really uh, warm it's 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 a nice you can wear it in warm periods of the, of uh, of uh, weather or also when it's just a little bit you know just too cold for a dress and bare legs let's say so this is how the jacket is looking i hope you can see it a little bit i'll put uh, of course pictures uh, during the video on one of my sides i don't know where so um so in the jacket it was of course really easy it's not a hard uh, garment to sew you can see here there is quite a bit of uh, top stitching involved you can see the back here here i decided that i wanted two rows of top stitching here is the yoke with with my little collar you can see it here um for interfacing i used let's see i used i think i used two types of interfacing one that was a little bit more um sturdier for the outer layer and one that it was much lighter for the uh, under color the same let's see for the here i used something that it was more sturdier for the button uh, it's not a button band it's a cut on band here is the pocket you can see it here on the inside from the outside you can see only the top stitching i think this is going to be a really great pattern also for um classic jeans jacket and of course you could add here at the bottom um and waistband here to make it really like a jeans jacket something that i used this time you can see also here the the the, um, the cuffs with two buttons and this is something this would be really nice to have this band here so wide at the bottom of the jacket or you know maybe just a little bit uh narrower but it will make really a real uh, denim jacket and here you can see the slit I think this is also nice. Um, this time I used as for buttons because I wasn't sure. Um, well, this fabric is not so heavy as a denim, but I had, I just had, um, uh, uh, I just bought from from uh, Amazon just a few days before I started on this. I found some buttons, some jeans buttons, or at least they are looking like jeans buttons, as you can see. But the really cool thing about these ones is the fact that they are getting screwed in the button. So it's not your uh, standard jeans, jeans button where you need to smash them with a, with, a ham, with a hammer or, I don't know, some other type of uh, tools. These ones, and they are really, really light. I don't know how best is the quality, I really don't know. But the really cool thing is, you get, so this is was a set with uh, different uh, styles. And the cool thing is that you get the button and you get like a little screw. Oh, oops. You can see here. And you just make a hole. And I, uh, I used a tool to make a hole in my garment. And then just put the screw through the hole. And then uh, just screw it in with the with the little screwdriver that they delivered with the package and it's just a great button and i think it it's it's great because it's really easy to apply it's coming really uh and this well it's not going to come out but not only that it works really great on a light fabric like this you know the jeans button some of them they could be a little bit heavier it works really great on a light fabric and it's looking really really nice on the inside as you can see here and also especially this one here at the top where the jacket is going to fall a little bit open and I'm not going to close this one it's a really nice finish on the inside so I'm really happy with these buttons so this was I think everything that I had to say about uh, the jacket jacket number seven from Knip Mode uh, 5 2024 I forget uh, I'm, I'm I have it in my head as uh, cream order 4 but it's 5. 
So I'm really, really happy with it. And it's something I have it in the, in the pictures. I have it also. I have it only together with the pants, but I think it's going to be really nice also with with uh, you know just as a little uh, extra layer when it's not really warm outside. You can see it here. Well, I'm, I don't think I'm going to wear it over a top like this, but it's just so nice. And I really like the length. Well, I think it could go just a little bit shorter but it's, it's it's a really nice it's a really nice garment um if you are interested to see the pants of course by the magic of uh, internet and youtube you will see uh, a link in the video description for the pants i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you got some really good tips about how to choose your size and uh, about how to trace this pattern if you're really interested in and you're really going to get crazy about the pattern pieces that you see in the pattern description, but you have only one piece on your uh, pattern sheet. It's, it's really not difficult. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give me a thumb up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. And if you have any questions or I don't know, anything, just put them here in the under the video and I'll answer your comments. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Bye.